the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Amen. Amen. God bless everybody. Hallelujah. You know what? This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. You know, the thing is that God has given us, every last one of us, especially those of us who grew up in my generation, God has given us a daily uh, opportunity to glorify his name. And, and what we're going to do is just continue to uh, focus on glorifying God daily. And we, some of my pastors say, we need to glorify God daily. The fact is that all we need to do is be that light, be that representative, be what God called us to be. And you know, this something I'm talking about today is talking about the fact is that what we need to do is get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit have his way. And you know, I've been talking, especially since I really like it, I want to share something that we covered last week and I, I really want to be able to cover it uh, uh, this week. I think I, I may have left that scripture out too uh, that I had last week where it says uh, uh, let's say, let me ask the question on the thing. Show us the Father. Uh, it, was, it was last week it was John 14, 8 uh, that, I, that I wanted to be able to kind of tap you know, go over with, with everybody. Uh, but don't forget, if you don't know, what I've been talking about lately is, is the very fruit of the Spirit. Uh, and the fact that that is what we're supposed to do, uh, supposed to bear fruits of the Spirit. What fruits of the Spirit I'm talking about? Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Now the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Right, and so the fact is that there is no law against bearing fruits of the spirit, and God wants us to bear fruits of the spirit. You know, a lot of cases we're talking about religion. Religion is talking about uh, the, the 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 different, you know, what type of clothes you wear, what type of, of uh, hair that you're supposed to uh, lengthen your hair. Uh, it, it basically talks about the the, the Ten Commandments and, and and all the other types of commandments that the Jews gave. Uh, talks about people sit there and try to say, well, you know, you can't go to the football game, you can't watch the car on Sunday, you can't, uh, you can't do this, you can't do that, you don't both to drink, you don't both to courage, you don't both to spend on people, and <laughs> we just shouldn't anyway. But but it, it basically focuses on behavior uh, instead of characteristics, and that's what the Holy Spirit is talking about. The characteristics is the fruit of the Spirit to love one another. God told us in John 14 46, I think. Mean, 1434, he said, New, Jesus said, the new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I love you because you also love one another. So that's what we want to try to focus on uh, this morning. And, and, and I guarantee you, if we could just get this understanding uh, of what the word of God is trying to tell us today, you would be amazed. And so we got a lot of scripture to cover, but that's what it's all about, right? It's more of the word that is talked about opposed to what comes out of my mouth or your mouth because what matters is that what we say especially when we use the scriptures that a person can go back and review those scriptures and study to show themselves approved because that's what we want to do we want everyone you study and show yourself approved unto god and that christ is the head of your life amen let's pray father i thank you for this opportunity Come and worship and praise your holy name. You said when two or three are God in your name, you've been in the midst of them. Father, I believe that those that you have called and ordained to listen to this, to this video uh, live and those that are listening to it in recording, that we we get into your word, love, learning to move ourselves out of the way and let the Holy Spirit have his way to lead us and guide us all to. I thank you for what you're about to do. And I know that you have ordained this time for those who you have called to hear your word, those who you are calling to receive your word, glory to God, and to and become children of God. We thank you now and we pray that the word speak for itself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So the, the point of this is 
that what I was talking about in, in, in the uh, let me see if I can put that back on that, that scripture I was talking about in uh, John 14 14 we talked about it last week and I, I, it, it, it was it was interesting when we, we talked about it is that uh, there was a little trepidation and 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 being able to repeat that uh, same statement uh, about who we represent, right? <laughs> and, and 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 whether we could say this this, this make the same comment uh, that that uh, <laughs> Lord, that God make the same comment. That Jesus made, and the reality is, we say it all the time. We we say uh, that uh, we we constantly say that we are Christians, and Christian means Christ-like, right? And the whole point is that being Christ-like, we people that means we're 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 that literally what the word means, right? Christ-like. They, in other words, as they see us, they should see the likeness of Christ in us. We are anointed like, amen? Like Jesus Christ, we are anointed like. We, when the when day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and rested on us. And then the fact that we were sent to go and preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the whole purpose of the fivefold ministry gift is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And therefore, I'm telling you, this is an opportunity to do, uh, equip you to do the work of the ministry as well as be myself to do the work of the ministry. And one of the things to do the work of the ministry is to be able, amen, to, to be ambassadors for Christ, bearing the fruits of the Spirit while you're doing it so that people can see the love of God in you, meaning the love that he has given us, we give to others. The word he has given us, we give to others. And what is that word? The word is love. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He's trying to sit there and say, and I, you know, it's funny. I have seen other people that tried to, that to say, no, he ain't died for the world. But that's what's written. And then they're going to use other scriptures to say, well, no, it, it didn't apply to, to everybody. Well, that's what the word said. You can say some other scriptures here, but you can't negate. See, one of the things about people you got to watch out. There's one equipment of, of the Bible. The Bible stays consistent. And if the scriptures sit there and say that God so loved the world, that is written that God so loved the world, and he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish with everlasting life. That's what's written. And there's other scriptures also called confirm, com, you know, confirms that. And, and you get some people and say, no, I, I'm buying you that, that that God didn't like, uh, uh, he hated Esau. What the Bible says is that God says, as a matter of fact, I showed it. Let, let me read this first to you. Then I'm going uh, well, to go and talk this other scripture right quick. Let me show look, some people, they, 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 they want, Somebody not be qualified, as long as they're qualified, they figure that they feel very comfortable with it. Because we're in this disqualified mode. We think that it's it's, a, that it's, a, it's, 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 it's a critical that you be accepted, but be able to disqualify other, other people. And and I tell you, man, it's, we're not in a ministry of disqualification. And I, 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 one of my friends uh, uh, deals with the even with, with the black Hebrews and they're talking about Esau, the Edomites and all that stuff. I understand where you're coming from. I even understand if you identify yourself as Israelite. And I understand if you want to say that I should also be one. I can see where you're coming from, but also I can see the fact is that the reason of Jeremiah 28 you said is the fact is that because you disobeyed man, that you were, you were put away and turned away. And Israel itself, the whole Israel, first you got the northern tribes that were just taken away and scattered from Syria all the way and penetrated into Africa and 
and all over the world scattered. And then you had, and then you had the Jerusalem, the Jews, uh, tribe of Judah, that's what Jews come from. They were uh, taken away to Babylon and they was carried away and they were gone for over 400 some years as well. You know, already the fact that there was an Egypt for 400 some years when uh, uh, Israel went in there with his children, right? And Joseph was there and, and they, they settled there and, and, and they grew and prospered there. And uh, they went in with 75 people and they left with four, you know, at least a million or two million people uh, for 400 some years. And, and obviously they looked like Egyptians, right? They were Hebrews, but they looked like Egyptians when they left, because uh, God called them and to get out of Egypt, amen? And then they went and settled into the land of Cana and became the Jews. But the, the fact is that the beginning, our foundation of, of, of who we are and God choosing uh, the seed which is Jesus Christ, uh, came through the lineage of Abraham. And, and therefore, we look at this and say here in uh, Genesis 12, 1, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of that country, and from that kindred, and from that father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Verse 2, And I will make thee a great nation. That's Israel, right? That's Israel. Whether you're black, black Hebrews or, or white Hebrews or a combination of all, that's, that's the great nation. And he said, I will bless thee and I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. That is what he called them to be, a blessing, right? I mean, I like the fact this is the peak of, uh, of uh, Solomon was uh, where all countries were coming to hear the wisdom of Solomon, coming to see the glory of God. Uh, the, the queen of uh, the Egypt, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's uh, Egyptian, uh, Ethiopian queen came and 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 saw the, the glory in the temple and the, and the clouds showed up and people fell out because of the Holy Spirit coming in and dwelling into that temple that Solomon built for God and and and, and people all over the world was coming and and, and the, the nation was so prosperous. People was given it to that nation, right? And the lead making allegiance of that nation. It was the it was the it was the height to where people was coming to Jerusalem. Yeah, and they fell. They fell because they then they started allowing Solomon himself started allowing the the the, the allegiance of wives that he bought from, from not bought but uh, married. I guess when he made allegiance to a lot of those nations, he loved those people to the point that he allowed them to bring in their different types of pagan worship. But next thing you know, uh, it led Israel astray. And he told them, don't don't bring other gods before me. He told them, don't sit there and even go with all these other people. If you go to these people, they come be converted to be a he a Jew, you know, be Jews, right? They, or, or Israelites. They should have been converted and not allowed to, to build places to worship their pagan god. It's like, it's not in here, not in here, not in this, amen, not in this country. This is this country was established by God. We don't bring those things in. If you want to be alleg allegiance with Israel, the wives that we married, I'm talking about with Solomon, really should have been you convert be a Hebrew. That's what it should have been. But that didn't happen. And then that's when they fell after Solomon died and he was, you know, ripped and everything apart. But but the point is that God prophecy is saying is that verse 2 again in Genesis 12 2, he said, and I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. But here's the point that if people don't Maybe many, maybe all of us sometimes don't read and hear. Listen what it says in verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. And look at this. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. 
I know that when I hear the people saying that, you know, they're, they're the, the true Israelites and that they, they're, 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 everything was made for them. But if we're going to go by the scripture, and I'm saying that it's, it's what's written. See, it is written, right? It was. It is written. He said in verse three, that part, that and, that conjunction. Listen, verse three. He said, "And I will bless thee. I will bless him that bless thee, and I will curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed." God planned using Abraham, using Abram, and the children that he called to become a great nation was to be a blessing for all families of the earth, not to serve, but to be a blessing. And all the families will be blessed. And what blessing means to have eternal life. God was reconciling the world. That's what the scripture said in reconciling the world. That's what John 3, 16 says, that God so loved the world. You can't take that away. You can't sit there and say, well, he hated these people. Therefore, it was Edomites. We, we can't use them. You can't say that because that's not what he said. That's not what his intent was. We got to go by his will and his will be done. And even the fact that we talked about it going back under the law. I know the, the other part about it is that, when, you know, when they say the two great commandments, to love the Lord that God with all that heart, with all that soul, with all that mind, all that strength, and to love that neighbor that self. He's talking about the fact is that I, my intent is always to first make sure that you understand I am God and there's no other God before me. And the fact is to love that neighbor that self. That means your neighbor. He didn't, he didn't say the Jews or the, the, the uh, Israelites or the Hebrews. He said, your neighbor, your neighbor is anybody that lives next to you. The neighbor, because the world is getting smaller by transportation, the world is your neighbor. And, and when we talk about loving somebody, it's not talking about giving, uh, giving them the right to be uh, to do bad. It means that I, if you in need, I should try to help you. You know, that's what he gave the story about the, the Good Samaritan. So that the fact is that if you see somebody half dead on the road, <laughs> if you see somebody half dead on the road, that you don't, you you help them. See, because he was showing him just just Jesus Christ. This is the uh, the New Testament when he's talking about to the guys of who is my neighbor. He used the story of the Good Samaritan to show that a priest came by and he walked on the other side of the man that was half dead. Uh, then it was a, uh, Levi came by who worked in the temple. He looked at the man, then he walked on the other side. He left him alone. Then the Samaritan, somebody that was half Jewish or had some of the descendants, probably some of them were some of the uh, northern tribe because they were mixed, right? And, and the Jews, uh, Jews rejected them because they were they, they had already mingled and mixed with other races. So they they were they the ones that came by saw the man and, and, and helped the man that was wounded and uh couldn't take him to the end and paid for his, his any expenses that the guy had and and then the jesus asked the man uh who is the guy neighbor that helped and he said that basically said the samaritan helped because he the one that showed mercy and then jesus said go and do likewise he, see that he said go into life I said we'll use that there's not there's not the topic for this uh study today but i'm just trying to show you the fact is that we are all one the body of christ you know and, and whether you could be it, it's not about faith it's about love he gave us a commandment to love one another we love one another so that others can see that we are the disciples that love one another so that, that's why I just want to put that in there. I think that's important for us to understand that God loved all of us. He wanted to bring, and he created all of us. He was created in, we, all mankind, were created in the image of God. 
And if we're created in the image of God, then we should love one another because we should love God. If we hate one another, then we're trying to say to it in the round of our way that you hate God because you hate he that is created in his image. People have to come up with cover all these disqualifications and try to sit there and say that it is not that it's all about uh me when it's not about you, it's about him, and that we are his children if we receive him. He connected us with Jesus Christ so we can love one another and show the world that we're the light of the world. And that's what I want to be able to talk about. The fact that we're the light of the world. We, we, we're supposed to be able to show people who we are in Christ Jesus. We're supposed to be representative of the body of Christ so that people can see who we are so they can see Jesus in us. Huh? They want to see the Holy Spirit dwells in us, right? The Bible says, Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. But He wants us to allow the Holy Spirit to be able to be revealed to us so that the working, because the Bible says, He that is led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. And so if people can see the children of God, they can see the Holy Spirit working through us. Huh? We are the oracles of God being able to. Preach his words. We do what he tells us to do. We represent with the ambassadors of the kingdom of God. We are kingdom people. Amen. We are kingdom people. What do kingdom people mean? We're talking about the fact that we, Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And when we're coming to and receive Jesus Christ, we're authorized to be in that kingdom. So that people can see the power and the north of God. Amen. So I want to be able to show that and, and, and talk about this. The fact is that you are the light of the world. And there's a purpose that you have. And and and, and pastors and, and all the fivefold ministry, look, you have to teach them everything you know so that they can go and do the work of the ministry. It is not about them doing something that makes them more anointed than you is about them going to the work of the ministry. That is, this is a big, this is a big ministry. This is a world ministry. We got people all over the world. We can't sit there and try to say, no, no, these people are mine and I'm going to control them and I tell them what to do and then we're going to do great things under my leadership. No, it's about the fact is that you equip them. Please, every ministry out there. Equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And this is what I'm saying. They're the ones that's on the front line. They're the ones that gotta fight the spiritual warfare, just like you. And they need to be equipped with all the knowledge and understanding of the word of God, because that's where they will prosper. That's where they will excel. If we allow them, we allow one another to grow. Ourselves. We got to equip ourselves so we can deal and help raise our families. We got to equip them so we can deal with the day to day jobs that we have. We got to equip so that we deal with the life and death struggles of this world. We got to be able to equip so we can minister the gospel to everybody we come in contact with. I know the importance of you said, bring them to, bring them to the church where well, they are the church, your building, my facility. That's, that's not the church. We're the church. We are the living epistle. They are the church when they are ministering to somebody. He said, when two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst of it. That's the church. So I know you need the people to come. I know that so that you can have resources. That's, that's great. And I, and I encourage everybody to go and find a church home. Please find a church home. So you can worship with other believers and equip with other believers. So then you can go and do the work of the ministry. Call them to come to your hey pastor. Say, call them to come to the, uh, the ministry that you're part of, and 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 and, and, and so that because when we're in numbers, we can do more things than we can be. So then we can do it together. So it's always good to have a church home so you can have a place to grow. Back. And then and encourage other people to come there, but also encourage them to be prepared where out here this world. Out here, that's where he wants them to be. 
Yeah. Amen. So that's why I want to be, uh, remind people of that. Amen. So one of the things is, and I want to uh, bring this up. I wish I could cover some other scriptures again, but I, I I'll get them later. I think I think it's important for us to first just uh, get into what the subject today is.